These last two weeks have been very interesting. I went to Ireland, as you know, for the World Meeting of Families. Sunday, I can't celebrate, can't celebrate Mass with the Holy Father. As we climbed up on the stage, I looked out, and all I could see was people. It was kind of like a mound. It was like an amphitheater. I was amazed. One of the reasons I went to Ireland was because I was born there, but I felt I needed to at least offer my support to the church. And I was really surprised. There was almost 500,000 people at the Mass. You know what it dawned on me at that moment was, my God, that's how many Catholics are in the Diocese of Orlando. Having them all in one place at one time it was just mind-boggling. But it was a source of consolation because I saw again there was hope. This morning as I woke up and I was just reading the scriptures, there was a beautiful little piece of scriptures from Isaiah the prophet. And it said this, A shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and this root, a bud, shall blossom. We are in very difficult times. In fact, this week I spent three days with our priests. What was I going to say to them? What could I tell them? And I simply told them how I felt. But first of all, I apologized to them. I told them how sorry I was. As a bishop, I felt I had let them down. Because they are in the front lines, and they are facing you, the people of God. And they're embarrassed. And they are, above all, remorseful. I, too, am embarrassed. I, too, am remorseful. But somehow, as I told you, even from the stump, something would shoot. Even from that would come a blossom. These last three or four days have been very powerful for me personally as a bishop as I spend time with you, my brother priests. They not only inspired me, but they above all helped me to understand what it is to be a bishop. And then we come to today. See so many people who have come out to listen and to learn you are the light of the world. And as I have asked you over and over again, my three priorities are to enkindle a deeper faith, to form Christian leaders, and to harmonize in our ministries. And today I see it. I hear it. But during the convocation, I had three of our priests speak. A newly ordained spoke about how much he longed to serve the Lord, how much he looked forward to being ordained, despite what was happening, because he felt and understood the gift, the sacredness, and the mystery that God gives each and every priest. We had a priest who was ordained a little over 25 years. He talked about his family, how his family inspired him in his priesthood, and how evening prayer, going to Mass on Sundays, and how they encouraged him when he told his parents he wanted to be a priest. And then we had a senior priest. He got up and talked about his life. And he, too, was born in Ireland. And he talked about growing up on a farm with sheep. And you know, he said, when I grew up, I used to herd sheep. I was always herding them, pushing them, and shoving them. 
And then I came to the United States and I became a priest and a pastor. And he said, I realize the shepherd leads the flock. He doesn't hunt them or shunt them. And for those three days, we relived the gift of priesthood. We come to this morning for the bishop walk kicked off. He reminded us again that Jesus lacks nothing but you and me. It's not our words we speak, but the words of Jesus Christ. It is not the bread that we break, but his body and blood. So we come to celebrate, to believe, and to remember. To celebrate the gift, the mercy, or the mystery, and above all, the love of Jesus Christ. Bishop Walk reminded us of the gift. And he showed us by example what that gift was. When he told us about his father bringing the gifts to the altar at his ordination to be a bishop. His father didn't say anything but just put the sign of the cross on his forehead. All of us are signed at baptism as gifts. We are gifts to God. We are gifts of Jesus Christ to one another. And we are gifted with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In a real way, all of us share in the priesthood of Jesus Christ. But we share, especially as priests, in the gift of the Eucharist. At ordination, our hands are anointed as priests. At baptism, your forehead, your head is anointed with chrism. You are consecrated to know and love the Lord. We are consecrated as priests to bring Christ, to consecrate and make holy each and every one of you, but especially to feed you with the real presence. Make bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus. Not just in our words, but in the words of Jesus. Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body. Take this chalice filled with wine. For this is my blood poured out for you. But then Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. And we heard that over and over today. The Eucharist is not a symbol. It is the presence of Jesus Christ. It is the true presence of Jesus Christ. Sister Marie Therese taught us the gift, the gift of love. A Eucharistic heart is love, the sacredness the heart of Jesus revealing his love to each and every one of us. Love is the true sign of the presence of God in the church. Mary is not silent in the gospel. Pope Francis told us that last week in Ireland. At the marriage feast of Canaan, Mary spoke up and she said, do whatever he tells you. And then Pope Francis said that he asked Mary to speak up for the church in its problems today, that she may help each and every one of us, bishops, priests, and the people of God. 
that ye may bring a sense of peace to the people. Mary's prayer, the Magnificat, again reminds us, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. The, the great gift, again, of her life. The sacredness of all life, and especially the sacredness of the unborn. Sister mentioned Maximilian Kolbe in his love. How he gave of himself. I'd like to remind you too of a symbol of love who will be, or will be canonized on October 14th next, Oscar Romero. Oscar Romero got before the people in El, El Salvador during the Civil War. Brothers fighting brothers, sisters fighting sisters, family fighting families. And he simply said this to the people of El Salvador, how I would like to engrave in each one of your hearts, Christianity is not a list of beliefs to be believed, our laws to be obeyed, or a list of prohibitions, that makes it too distasteful. Christianity is a person who loves you a great deal, and that person calls for your love right now, and that person is Jesus Christ. So we're called out of act of love to live our faith, to share our faith, and above all, to show our faith. Paul VI, blessed Paul VI, said, you know, people listen or learn from witnesses, not from teachers. If they learn from teachers, it is because they are good witnesses. We have to witness our faith in the world today. We can't be silent. We've got to let the world see that we do believe, we do have faith, and we do, above all, want to serve the Lord. Bishop Reed brought us to that realization that life is a mystery. But especially the life of our faith cannot be that mystery. Our life has to be lived. But the mystery we share is the mystery of Jesus and his real presence in the Eucharist. And the only way we can come to believe and know that mystery is through a life of prayer. Prayer is our life's strength. Prayer is our resource to know and love the Lord. But prayer can't be just on Sunday. Prayer has to be every moment of our lives. Everything we say and do has to be immersed in our relationship with Jesus Christ. We have been gifted at baptism. We have been gifted with the Holy Spirit wisdom, the wisdom to know God, understanding, to know our faith, and the knowledge to be able to share that faith. So we have been gifted not only with the Eucharist, not only with Jesus, but with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. the gift above all that each of us have to constantly remind ourselves of is the sacredness, how sacred life is, how sacred above all our faith is. Without being sacred and without a life of prayer, how can we really truly bring ourselves as we come to Mass every day 
Let us call to mind our sins so that we can celebrate these sacred mysteries. My good people, today we give thanks to the Lord. We give thanks to the Lord for the gift of our faith, for the gift of 50 years as a diocese. But Florida has been blessed in many ways. The rich history of the Christian faith in Florida, the very first Mass celebrated here in 1512, the first parish, the first school. We have to be proud of who we are. We are Catholic. We are followers of Jesus Christ, and we believe in the great gift that God has given us, the sacred mystery that nourishes us, strengthens us, and above all, leads us to the greatest place of all, to be with God forever in heaven. Amen.